Hello everybody, Refuge family. This is Fausto Fluker here with the Spanish Ministry of Refuge family, Huntington Beach, California. What a blessing it is to be able to share with you, English speaking world, about a refuge daily, a message, a devotional, a word of encouragement. One of the things that is in my heart is the words of the Apostle Paul, who said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. For those that believe, it is the power of God unto salvation for those that believe, making no difference, the Greek or the Jew or Hispanics or anyone. The gospel is for everybody. I would like to encourage you, as I recently remember and read about George Mueller. George Mueller is said that he read the Bible 200 times. And 50 of those times, he did it kneeling down. How about that for a challenge today? Also, when he was near his death, somebody asked him, since you're dying, what would you like to do as you are dying? And he was kneeling down and he raised his voice in saying, I want to read more of his word because I still don't know my Lord as much as I should know him. Wow, that is powerful. That is challenging. That seems to be just like a thought for a motivational moment. But more than that, it's an inspirational moment. When we read about those men that walk this same path before us and also face challenges that we don't know about, we seem to believe that the challenges that we are facing today are the greatest challenges ever. But yet, no. The Apostle Peter says that these trials are common in all the world with all our brothers. Also, Peter, right into chapter 5 in his letter to the shepherd, he says, after you have suffered some, God will confirm and establish, and God will strengthen you, and he will restore you. And that's what we want. But sometimes we want the cake without really being able to prepare it or let those who prepare it prepare it real well. So let us face whatever challenge we have today. Refuge family, God is on the move. God is doing great things. I want to encourage you, read the Bible. Think about George Mueller, who had many orphanages that he founded. And it is said that he took care of over 10,000 children. And he saw the hand of God, the mighty power of God manifest in many different ways. Also, he trusted in the Lord more than in man. George Mueller rather would pray than to go out and start telling people their needs so that they can help them. There's, there's been said that one afternoon, the Queen of England, because of his reputation, went to see him. And as he was in his room praying, reading his Bible, the maid knocked at the door and said, Mr. Mueller, the queen is here wanting to speak to you. She's waiting in the living room. He said, well, tell her that right now I'm busy. She's the queen, Mueller. He says, yes, I'm talking to the king of kings and lord of lords. How important, how much do we prioritize our time with the Lord? That's a good question to ask. When we think about the Gospels, when we think about the New Testament, when we think about the old and the new put together, bringing us the revelation of Jesus Christ, I would like to mention four important things. In the Gospels, the four Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, is the proclamation of the Gospel. In the book of Acts, is the propagation of the Gospel as it spread out. In the book of Romans, through the epistle of Jude, is the explanation of the gospel. And then finally, in the book of Revelation, Apocalypse in Spanish, apocalyptic book, is the culmination of the gospel. So would you take heed to what God may want to say to you today at Refuge Daily, and let the revelation of Jesus' beauty be manifested in your life so that we may walk in our calling and our destiny in God's power. 
like to read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 19. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Let us take heed to the great and mighty power of God made available to us, to whom who is above all imaginations, to him who is able to do exceedingly above all we can ask or think. So I pray for the revelation of Jesus' beauty that in your life and I will enhance our walk with him in our calling. Also, I would like to pray to be strengthened in the might through his spirit and to be rooted and grounded in love. What is it for us to do so much and yet there is no love? Hurt people hurt people. So we must be careful not to be hurting people, but to be the agents by which God uses us to bring healing and hope and restoration. The Word of God does that. Spirit of worship and adoration, humility, meekness does that. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Love, peace, joy, meekness, patience, all long-suffering, self-control, the fruit of the Spirit. So this is my prayer, Ephesians 3, 16 through 19, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through, the, through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. May the revelation of Jesus' beauty be real in your life. May the strengthening of the Lord may be grounded and rooted in your heart. Also, may God's love abound in us in the knowledge of God, not just the emotion, the, ooh, you know, I feel the... But, but the really Philippians 1, 9 through 11 says, And this I pray, that you love, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of our God. Hallelujah. May the Lord richly bless you. May you be empowered today with a greater desire to read his word, to spend time alone with him. Nothing can take place in the order of priorities, but to spend time with God, to hear his voice, to share and, and tell him from the depth of your heart and the Bible, the word of God, the New Testament. Read through the New Testament as many times as you can. Early in my Christian walk, I was given the example to read the whole New Testament, 27 books, once a month, and it changed my life. I was also influenced early in my Christian walk to read Proverbs in the morning and Psalms at night. It changed my life. Now it's a matter of renewing those vows. It's a matter of realizing I want more. I don't have enough. Many people live like if they had enough. I've been a Christian for so long. I read the Bible so many times. Remember George Mueller? He read the Bible 200 times. Can you make an account how many times you've done it? Let me remind you again. The gospel. Proclamation in the four gospels. The propagation of the gospel in the book of Acts. The explanation of the gospel through Romans and Jude. And the culmination of the gospel, the book of Revelation. El libro de Apocalipsis, the book of the Apocalypse, The unveiling of Jesus and of the events to come. This is Fausto Fluker with Refuge Daily. 
very happy and enjoying this moment to share with you in your language, English, and in Spanish, we would say, Dios te bendiga. Hasta la vista, mi hermano. I love you. Bless you. Bye-bye.